One of the things that was uh, on the other side of this, jumping back now to where I was, this was really the main point, and we're going to come back and talk about it some more. This is what animates me. This is what's most important to me, is, that, is creating environments that are sufficiently responsive to allow people, allow children as they're developing, to be able to use that same process, which has allowed them to so extend themselves so wonderfully in other ways, to be able to use that same process to extend and unfold into the world of knowledge. I think it's possible, and I know that if children had a way to do that, there would be an awesome jump in what goes on in the world. And unless we find a way to bridge that, then we're going to keep machining them into being in a way that's not healthy and that's not bringing forth learners. One of the things that uh, that's so scary about going back to the knower learner shift that I want to kind of pick up on was one day I had uh, my son was over he had a bunch of his friends it was like uh, five or six little three-year-olds he's constantly kind of experimenting with multicultural democracy in the living room and uh, he was having this thing go on in the living room and I was watching these children watching how they play together and watching what they do together And one of the things that, I mean, this was one of the first floorings when I just, I mean, it took me a while to get up off the floor after I observed this. These kids are playing, and you know how kids will be, they're constantly trying to draw each other into doing something with each other, right? One of talking about, all excited about, I just discovered this, trying to draw each other into being together. And that what was so amazing and you're all going to have this experience because you all have this experience and you all do it too but it's really something to watch with kids is that when kids didn't want to participate with one another when they didn't want to be involved when they didn't want to fall into each other's kind of orbit and play with the other one in the right way when some kid was telling them all about something that they were on what the kid said was I know I know that it was like that's it. I don't need any more of that. It was like a physical, that's how I felt it at first. It was like a physical push. I know. I know is the end of learning. <laughs> it's a disinvitation. Knowledge isn't, knowing isn't, but the knee jerk attitude and the tone, I know, which I, I constantly exemplify up here for you. <laughs> it's pretty pervasive stuff. <laughs> is that it has the quality of it is so, as I was saying before, and what it tends to do is to shove one another off. I mean, think about it. Go back over your own experience just today. <laughs> I know comes up all the time to push each other off, so we don't have to pay attention to one another. And there's nothing wrong with knowledge or knowing. What's, what's, what's wrong is the idea that knowledge and knowing is some final end. That if we, that, in other words, what I want to say is, is that, that knowing needs to be provisional. It needs to be what I characterize as provisional scaffolding. It's the place that, that I kind of crawl through in order to get to the next stage, and it's provisional. I can disassemble it. It isn't controlling me. I'm using it to extend myself. That's shifted. That's not the way things work right now. In fact, it might say that, uh, at least in my own case, I experience this as a, almost a schizophrenia, that there's times whenever I'm insecure, whenever I have a problem with how I am myself, then I'm a knower. And I'm just spitting off with, I know, I know, I know, I know. And whenever I'm really open to trying to take the next steps, I'm a learner. And I'm able to listen with a different kind of quality. And if you, if you start to listen to this in yourself, you'll see it. You'll see that, that in this respect, we're all schizophrenic. We're all constantly oscillating between, I know, and, and, a, and a kind of openness to be learning. And we've propagated this throughout our whole culture. Children are imbibed this. And so they come, they come to school in a way that, in many respects, is, is very, very... Uh, troubling from a point of view of how could we help them become learners, given where we started. And yet this stands in marked contrast to the, uh, in science it is said that the beginning of wisdom is I don't know, right? I don't know. 
And yet, how many children feel, I mean, just be the child of the world for a minute right now, how many children really feel rewarded for saying, expressing, I don't know? They don't. They're taught from a real early age that if they don't know, they're in trouble. So they're conditioned to try to grab and seize and lock on knowledge as the shield and brace and interface to the world. Now, what I've done right now is I've said, I've said a few pieces about my general orientation about learners and learning and what I'm most concerned with in terms of bringing out an environment and uh, learning systems and individual interpersonal relationships and group collaborative approaches and an overall restructuring of education that fundamentally intends to bring forth learning oriented human beings. That's the number one purpose. And I've said in a way to kind of create a ground for switching into this that, that one of the major shifts is the knower learner shift. Right? We've just begun to talk about that, and I've talked a little bit about what, that, what the experience of that is for children and how it is that perhaps we can experience it, because I feel pretty confident that there's a whole bunch of knower-learner schizos in here with me. <laughs>